Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, oh Allah, teach us from that which benefit us and benefit us with that which you have taught us and increase us in knowledge. Welcome all. I am Sister Aman representing the Sisters Committee and I would like to welcome Dr. Muhammad Taha who is an associate professor in the KU faculty, teaching medicine and at the same time seeing patients in KU Medical Center. Dr. Taha also volunteers his time at as a medical director at Mercy Health Preclinic. Uh, I would like to present to you this talk, Worried About Coronavirus? Ask the Doctor. Dr. Taha will give a short talk for 20 to 30 minutes about the current crisis, COVID-19, and provide us with some advice and guidance from his experience. Then he will be ready for answering any question. Uh, beware, sister and brothers. Uh, we kept all the mics in a mute mode for now, and I will unmute them at the end of the lecture to those who want to ask a question directly by raising their hand. Raising their hand is a button down uh, at more. You can click it and you'll see raise hand, so we will know who is uh, like to talk directly. Or you can send your question via uh, chat and the doctor will answer sequently. Uh, also, this lecture will be recorded and resent within our groups so that uh, everyone will get the benefit, insha'Allah. Dr. Muhammad, please proceed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to thank the sister committee for this opportunity to talk to you about this important topic. Um, so the topic of today talk, and I made it very practical. So my goal is not to just talk about a dry facts. That's why I included a lot of pictures and on a video also to show you certain aspect of disinfecting. Um, and I, uh, the way I constructed this talk, uh, I received several questions um, from the sister uh, committee and also from what I hear uh, the community asking about and try to construct uh, the initial talk to answer most of those questions. But at the end, it's an interactive. I would like to hear from, from you. And uh, if you heard something different or would like explanation, I'm happy to do that. Um, so let's start. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So the talk is about the COVID-19. Uh, what the COVID-19 stands for, it's not the China virus, it's the Corona uh, virus infect, uh, disease, basically. The COVID is coronavirus disease in 2019 because the first case was in 2019. Um, so that's the name of the COVID-19. If you hear COVID-19, that means the Corona, the new Corona disease. So first of all, um, before we start, I just want to explain something very important that this event, we may not see such an event in all our lifetime. This is a um, game changer in terms of like the last time we had such an impactful infection was in 2000, uh, in, I'm sorry, was in 1917 uh, with the, I think the Spanish flu at that time killed as many uh, people and also was as, as contagious as this one. So even though we have a lot of infections, this was a little bit different. And we'll talk about why it's a little bit different and why all the talk about it. Um, also, I just wanna point out that recommendations and, and, and uh, facts I'm given uh, could change. The reason why, because this is a very new disease and research is uh, still coming, so sometimes there was a stronger research that points different direction and the recommendations could change. We all know how the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, uh, has changed the recommendation in terms of wearing masks to the public. In the beginning, they were saying do not wear masks and then they changed the recommendations based on uh, new data that came to them and reviewing of infections like the COVID-19. Most of the uh, information that come to here, it didn't come from my experience, obviously it came from reputable sources like the CDC, Center for Disease and Control, FDA, um, the uh, FDA is Food and Drug Administration, and also from uh, reputable clinical medical journals. Um, so this is just to give you an idea. I'm going to talk in English, however, if there I named the slides. If there is a slide somebody would like me to go over it again in Arabic, I'm happy to do that at the end of the talk. I know um, some people may prefer Arabic as a first language, and I'm happy to repeat any of the 
lecture in Arabic. We tried to do two lectures, one in Arabic, one in English, but the time could not allow us because Ramadan uh, is coming and uh, I think the masjid has other commitment as well. So I would like you to be careful about what you hear. What you hear in the news, sometimes they would like to uh, basically present flashy news, something that as if, like, as if like there's a breakthrough and as if there is an opinion. And, and this is what sells in media, flashy opinions uh, sells. I just point out Dr. Oz and Dr. Fell has two uh, opinions on Fox News that were discredited. So lately, I'm not gonna go into details, but I'm just gonna warn you, even if one doctor that famous mention uh, something that didn't make sense or it did not was different than what other people has been breaching or what CDC is doing, he may be wrong. And, and this is very common, the coronavirus, because there are certain areas that are not very clear yet. So uh, the framework of the talk today, I'm just going to tell you what's the main points that I'm going to include. The first point, just uh, for curiosity, where did the COVID-19 uh, came from? Is it a man-made uh, virus? And why now? I mean, what, what's happening? Why it's just now? I will just touch base on this in a couple of slides. And, and the most important, actually, slides, how is different from other infections? How is different from influenza and common cold as far as symptoms and as far as, you know, why uh, we have influenza, it kills a lot of people, why we're not as concerned about uh, every year and we don't do this shutdown? completely uh, with influenza like we do with the COVID-19. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And also the most important part of this topic, probably the best practices to prevent contracting the virus. So what should we do to prevent us contracting that virus? And also I'll talk a little bit about the myths of COVID-19. Um, a lot of questions came about the immune system. Can we enhance the immune system? What can we do to increase our immune system? We'll talk about it in, in a slide or two. And, and the last part also would be about Ramadan. And, um, you know, Ramadan is coming and people, there are some uh, rumors that, you know, if you fast, maybe you get the coronavirus. Just to clarify some of these, uh, you know, the, these rumors and, and give you the facts. There's also a chance for questions and answers. I'll, if you want to ask in Arabic or in English, it's up to you. I'm going to translate anything in Arabic to the, um, to the rest and also answer it in both languages, inshallah. So this is uh, just a picture of the virus. This is not necessarily the corona, but a virus. Just to give you an idea what a virus is, because people do not understand this, this part. Outside of, um, of a host, outside of uh, human um, cells or, or um, outside of human cells or outside of animal cells, this virus actually does not present any life aspects. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't, you consume oxygen, it does not have anything. It's basically, it's a genetic material. This is the, in the center, genetic material. There's a lot of proteins outside, but um, it wait until it can enter uh, appropriate human cells, or uh, sometimes it could be also animal cells. And at that time, it would become active. It take over and try to reproduce, basically. A lot of time, it kills the cells that, uh, you know, they're also infected. And, and more copies of this virus will be produced. So this is very important to, to ask because sometimes the test for this, it's only test for that genetic material inside. Even if the rest of the virus is destroyed and the virus cannot be infected, sometimes it, it can test positive because it just look at the genetic material and, and basically it's, it's like a key. They look for the key and the lock. And if the key into the lock, they will say we have the COVID-19. But sometimes that's not the case when you isolate it from services, for example. Um, so outside the host, uh, it's inactive. We can actually permanently inactivate or kill the virus, basically. And we'll talk about how we can do that by destroying this upper. So the upper, uh, the envelope, basically, that have fat in it, that have protein in it, that is like soap, for example, can destroy that the same way we take off, uh, we clean butter, for example, or oil. Uh, from outside. So, so soap definitely is effective in this virus as well. Um, so is the corona man-made? There's a lot of people who are saying like this is, was, in, uh, was made in some of the laboratory in China. The, the short answer is no. I'm not going to go into details with that. But basically, the fact that we see uh, transmission of a virus that used to be in uh, animals and now moved 
to the human being is not a new phenomenon. We have seen in this decade, decade we have seen two times before. And the uh, bats has uh, plenty of coronaviruses, usually not infective unless there is a change that happened to those viruses. So I will show you here. So those are the bats, has many of the, this is the coronavirus. This is the Bangalorean. This is like the Akil al Naml al in Arabic. And they, basically what happened in the wet market, they sell those animals. They put them together. In nature, those animals do not uh, meet each other. But when they put them together, they infected each other. And each of those animals have different version of coronavirus. When they met together, there was mix of the genetic material. And now we have genetic material that able to, conf to basically infect the human being. And we got so lucky that this was very contagious, even more deadly to us than those animals. And when this started in the wet market, now it's a human to human transmission. So don't worry about bats anymore, killing bats or so. Some people, if they see bats, they're worried about Corona. No, it, you're gonna get, if somebody will get Corona now, we'll get it from a human being. So the, the transition already happened in the animals and now it came to us. The same thing happened in the past and there was a, in the Middle East with camels, there was something called the MERS and that was more deadly, but it was not, uh, but it was not as contagious. And we got lucky, even though 60% is the death rate of that, it didn't kill as many people at that time. There's the SARS also, the same story. At that time, it came to cats, civic cat, and then uh, came to a human. Uh, so this is not new. It's not made in lab, labs or so. This is well-known phenomena in the nature. So now, most important, I know I was talking about a basic that may not be interested, interesting to you. Today, I would like to talk uh, more about the symptoms. So what are the symptoms of the coronavirus? So almost the majority of patients, almost 90% of the patients, they have fever. That's very important. Keep in mind, 90% they have fever. Uh, almost two-thirds of patients, they have a dry cough. And also half of the patients, they have fatigue. Remember those three symptoms, fever, dry cough, and fatigue. Shortness of breath can be seen in like third of the patient, but it's a warning sign. If somebody starts getting short of breath, uh, sometimes they have to go to the hospital or at least seen in a physician office. Um, some people, they advocate like loss of smell could be an early sign, but other infection can cause it as well. And diarrhea is also like 10 to 15%. And when we infect, when we get infected, the symptoms will show up after an incubation period, two to 14 days. The majority of people within four to five days, but sometimes only two days, sometimes as long as 14 days. And this, this is very important to know the difference between the coronavirus and common cold or allergy. Look at this. This is the most important I would like you to remember. Stuffy nose and sneezing is common in allergy and common cold. Rush, they have stuffy nose and sneezing. This is rare in coronavirus. So if somebody have stuffy nose and sneezing and they get worried, you, this is usually not COVID-19. Obviously it's not 100%, but this is a good indicator. Um, the other thing, so, sore throat sometimes happen, but not very common. Also body ache, you, you see it more in influenza. Like they, they feel, they, they grieve, they feel like they're basically as beaten down. We don't see it as often the COVID uh, coronavirus or the COVID-19. But again, those are just give you an idea. And fortunately, um, or fortunately, basically, now we don't have as many flu or common cold anymore because, you know, the summer, you don't see those as often. So unfortunately, if somebody starts having fevers and cough, it's probably COVID-19 until proven otherwise. Means you probably have to be tested or assume you have it. So think about it. Fever and dry cough most likely could be the new disease, okay? So what do we do? I mean, why the question, is it, is it just like influenza, but a little bit more strong? The answer is no. And the reason why is no, because it's 20, it's not 20%, sorry, 20 times. So the slide's wrong. Is it 20 times more deadly? Mean if um, there are 100 people infected with influenza um, or 100 people will die from influenza, there will be 2,000 people die from the COVID-19, basically. So two, 20 times more deadly and much more contagious, which is very unfortunate. So even though it's more lethal and deadly, but it's also much more contagious. 
you take less amount of virus to, to infect um, people than what you do in the influenza. That's why in influenza, we don't lock down the economy and we do not sit in, at home. Here we do because it's very, very contagious and it could be deadly. So 20% of people who need hospital stay, uh, of, so if you have 100 people who, co who actually have the COVID-19, uh, 20, 20 people will need the hospital stay, especially elderly. Five to 10% will need an ICU and two to 5% may die from it. So this is the statistics around that. And those are not final because the study had shown difference in each country. Like in Italy, they have much more death rate than in other countries, for example. So it's not um, a straight line, but you can get, have an idea. 20% uh, of people need hospital stay. Uh, five to 10 people need an ICU, intensive care unit, and two to 5% may die from it, especially elderly. So let's talk about special population, elderly. So above 80 year old, if, you, if they contract, there's 20% chance of death. So above 80 year old, you know, it's very, much more deadly. Not like me in 100% they will die, but 20%, which is still very high. And maybe 50% they will need a hospital stay. Uh, so what about pregnant women? So pregnant women, um, basically the risk is not different in pregnant women than non-pregnant women. But if a pregnant woman got it, and she became sick, if she get, became really sick and got pneumonia, there is a high risk on the, on the fetus or the infant to have a preterm, means they like, deliver early, and that can cause complications as well. But generally speaking, pregnant women, it's not like more deadly for the woman than other uh, people in the same age group. Um, the new, newborn, uh, sorry, I think, the newborn, uh, also there's not, a huge risk for the newborn, but if a pregnant woman got it, she better not fed, uh, like breastfeed her kid. Uh, however, she can basically pump and say, and they can use the breastfeeding this way, but not directly uh, nursing her baby because the baby can get it, but it's still, it's not very, uh, in, you know, lethal in kids. So for example, kids, only 8% of kids, they have like more moderate symptoms. The most most of the kids, they have very mild symptoms. Alhamdulillah, that's good. Kids do not get it as severe as even adults or elderly, but uh, some of them are asymptomatic as well. As, as like eight to 10%, they don't have symptoms from kids, but they can be contagious. Uh, if somebody immune system is down for any reason, multiple like diabetes, uncontrolled, stuff like that, if they have taken cancer medications, uh, those also have a high risk. So the things, what about people who do not have symptoms? And um, how, what the percentage of people do not have symptoms and still could be infectious? There is a major debate about this. And studies have showed sometimes 5% only, sometimes as high as 80% in some of the studies. The reason of the difference, it's a huge difference, right? As you see, but the reason of the difference, because... Um, you have to define the symptoms. You know, if somebody have mild symptoms, you may consider it symptomatic. They have, for example, just a little bit of cough, something they got uh, every now and then. So they may not be considered this as uh, very symptomatic. I'm just gonna give you in the area, Johnson County has did basically a prevalence study. What does that mean? They did prevalence study. They, they, basically, they basically tested random people and to see how many people they have infection. So they tested like 300, so that's in April 10. They tested 300 people and they got like seven only infected. And they said the majority of those, like five of those, they have symptoms. So in our area, it's not very common to, be, to have no symptoms basically, according to this survey they did in Johnson County. Um, so this is very, very important. What should you do if you have these symptoms? If you start having fevers, and you have a dry cough or fatigue, and you think you have infection, what should you do? I mean, the best case, I mean, the best case scenario, you need to be tested. But unfortunately, testing is not as easy as we speak. For example, if you live in um, Jackson County, they would direct you to call Truman. It's 816404CARE or 2273. You can, down, you can write those down if you would like. You can call the hotline, a nurse will talk to you and they will, she will ask about symptoms. And honestly, if you feel well, they may not test you, 
even though you could have it. And the same thing in Johnson County, they have COVID hotline. I put the number down there for you. And, but again, a lot of, unfortunately, they don't test everybody. And there's two reasons for that. One, they don't have enough tests still. Despite what you hear in the media, we don't have enough tests. And the other part, there's not enough, test, not enough testing places for you to go place. Because basically, before they test you, you cannot go to, for example, Quest Diagnostic or a lab and get tested. This is not a blood test. This is a test they will take from your nose, and I'll show you what the test will look like. But uh, they have to wear appropriate PPE, personal protective equipment. They have to wear masks. They have to wear uh, gloves. And sometimes, you know, they don't have those clinics. KU, for example, do have a clinic called Wacken Clinic in Indian Creek, but you need the doctor order, and you have to be a patient at KU most of the time uh, to be able to be tested, to be un unfortunately. So it's then not easy. So what do you do, though, if you call those numbers and they were not helpful? They told you, you know, you don't have to be tested. Honestly, if you have those symptoms, you have to be isolated at home. And I will show you what that means. That means you, you stay at a separate room, separate bathroom. Um, you have to disinfect anything you touch at home. And I'll show you uh, in a video in a little bit what that means. Uh, this is unfortunate. The best way is to be tested, to be honest with you. So if you have a primary care, call the primary care and try to get tested. If you couldn't, then you have to assume you have the infection if you have the symptoms and isolate before you infect you know, your family. So this is how the test is being done. So the COVID-19 test, it's very uh, a little bit uncomfortable test. They have to go all the way with the swab to your, uh, basically the back of your nose. Um, and that should be done in a clinic or hospital. I said it cannot be done in a lab or you need a physician order for it. And there is a shortage of tests. So it may not be done if you feel well. Uh, but that's how they take this, you know, commercial labs, it's take a couple of days and uh, hospital, they can get it within a few hours, basically. And what that test detect, it detect the genetic material of the virus is very accurate. So if they tell you you have it, you 100% almost have it. But sometimes if they don't do a good job obtaining the sample, it can come negative, even if you have it, but that's rare. So think about it as a good test. It will detect if you really have it, if you're able to do the test. If you're negative, uh, but you feel strongly that you have it, unfortunately, you may uh, continue to be isolated or especially if they didn't do it this way, they go all the way. It has to be uncomfortable for it to be accurate. So how the, now we'll talk about transmission. I mean, how people transmit viruses in general. And this, is, uh, this was taken from the older journal. So the best way to transmit this is basically, uh, not the best way, but the way the COVID-19 transmit is called droplet. What does that mean, droplet? You see those, when he, with this gentleman coughs, even talk loudly or laugh, uh, even speak, sometimes uh, sneeze, uh, you actually cause those droplets. The droplets are the red, uh, bigger dots, and usually does not last very long in the air and then drop down. Um, the measles, for example, you see here the measles, this called airborne, that would be aerosols, and those basically very, very tiny micron, uh, very, very tiny, and it can detect, it can actually transmit the most contagious viruses, like the measles. Measles is one of the most contagious viruses. And beyond six feet, you can still get infected if you enter a room with somebody with measles, Ebola, for example, is only like a couple of feet. Um, however, the COVID-19 is something, something in between. That's why they tell you six feet. Stay away from people six feet if you want 100% not to get infected because the droplet that contains the virus will drop uh, on the ground before six feet, basically. Um, so that, those are the droplet. And even speaking, doesn't have, the person does not need to sneeze or cough to produce droplets. Sometimes if they speak loudly, it can actually cause droplet. So the, how the transmission, the main thing is droplet, close contact, meaning you are close to somebody who's infected. That's how you got it. And that's the majority of cases. You can trace those cases to people who are infected. That's the majority of cases. Close contact also, if your if you're family members and stuff like that can get it from each other from that, um, Contaminated hands, very important. When you, if you touch 
if you touch something contaminated, you put it on your nose or your face or your, your eyes, you can actually spread that. Contaminated services, let's say this gentleman here coughed on a table, somebody right after he left touched the table uh, and then touched his nose, you can actually get it this way as well. But this is not a uh, foodborne illness. What does that mean? Usually food does not transmit this. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, as well. So it's not like if you eat food, especially uh, you can get it from eating food. If the food is contaminated on the service and you touch it and it was a fresh, you can get it if you touch it and you touch your nose, but not by eating food usually. Okay. So as you know, how do we prevent this from happening? As you know, the CDC, which is Center for Disease Control and Prevention, has recommended we wear a cloth mask. As you see here, cloth mask in public. When do you wear it? You don't have to wear it at home, obviously. You wear it when you cannot maintain six feet uh, distant from others. Like this, you go into the supermarket and people are a little bit more crowded. You have to wear it uh, at that time. So how can you make this at home? Make sure it has multi-layer of fabric. So you have to fold it basically. And make sure it covers both nose and mouth. It has to fit uh, well, like uh, not loose basically. It fits snugly. And you need to secure it with something like an ear loop. Um, like here where we see the ear loop. It has to be washable because you're not gonna make hundreds of these. It's not gonna be one time, so you wash it. But make sure when you take it off, you don't touch the outside. You have to assume the outside is infected and don't touch the outside when you take it off. Otherwise, uh, and when you throw it, do not, um, you know, mix it with that. So throw it in the laundry, but do not just touch the laundry all over. Again, you get it, you get the infection. So basically make sure it's, it's dirty, nobody touch it, just throw it in the laundry. Laundry will take care of it, especially on hot, um, and, and with soap. So this is the cloth mask. And those are the medical masks. So that's the one on the left called the surgical mask, the one on the right called the N95. You see it in public. Today I was in Sam's Club. Everybody's wearing those, even though the CDC said, leave it to the healthcare providers, but nobody is listening. And I don't know where people get it from because in the hospital, we have to use it multiple times and disinfect it. At home, the reason why I, told, I tell you not necessarily to use it because you don't have the ability to disinfect it and you don't have multiple of these. If you can keep using it every day, you're gonna get infected from it and you're not gonna help you as much. So the N95 on the right, it's a beautiful, but if you have enough supply of it and you know, CDC said, leave it to the healthcare provider, we have to take care of a positive patient. And uh, this is the N95 again, this is the most effective way to, pre to prevent infection. But again, it has to be fit very well. If you have a, be a beard, for example, it doesn't fit well. You have to shave it <laughs> if you really want to use it correctly. So, it's, so the N95 mask is effective. Hospitals are sterilizing this. We, we used to be uh, using ultraviolet to sterilize it. At home, you cannot sterilize those uh, masks correctly and you can get infected from it. And you're not, you can't throw it away. It's very expensive and very rare, honestly. So the public... Um, is advisable not to use it, but I see everybody using a Samsung Club, so I don't know what to tell you uh, about that. Um, so here's the, what about gloves? Um, and one more thing on this, again, we said not to touch the outside, very, very important. Um, you have to wear it, and you, if you wanna wear it again, if it's not soiled, uh, you can do that if you're very careful not to touch it again. But you can wear it again, don't throw it away if you have one of those. Uh, but if it becomes soiled or if there is, um, you know, if there is any humidity on it or moist, it probably become ineffective. So what about the gloves? Um, so gloves can be helpful, but not here. You see in this case, this person wearing gloves, they assume they're touching and then they touch their uh, phone. So when you take the gloves out, your phone is still basically dirty. Um, so that's not the correct way to use it. If you, my advice, if you want to wear gloves, it can be helpful. Wear it only if you touch things that you think are dirty. Take it off and wash your hands afterwards. Don't wear it all day long. That's not the way, way to do it. If you touch any part, if you touch your nose, if you touch your eyes, it's 
actually it's worse than your uh, hands at that time. So I, I think if you use it, use it for short term. When you touch something like either in, you know, dirty or you're worried about it, throw it away. And there is a correct way to use the gloves. I'll show you the correct way. So the correct way to take it off, that's very important. When you take the first, just touch the outside. Don't touch the inside, otherwise you bring the infection. Touch the outside, remove it, and throw it away. The second one, you touch the inside because now your hand is clean. Touch just the inside and remove it this way. So, th and then you wash your hands, very important. It's not enough because you may accidentally, you have touched something dirty. Very, very important that you use it the correct way, otherwise it wouldn't be helpful. And please, please do not throw it in the uh, supermarket uh, parking lot. Because somebody else has to be taken off and again, get infected. So throw it in the trash. But just do the, red, the correct way to take it off. So I will show you now uh, a video that was made in the University of Kansas about if you have somebody sick at home, how do you take care of it? And it, it sounds extreme, uh, but that's the correct way if you have somebody who is either positive for COVID-19 or actually they are suspicious uh, to have COVID-19 and could not be tested. The University of Kansas Health System and the University of Kansas Medical Center care about the community in and out of the hospital. If you or a loved one is sick with the coronavirus, this video will provide a brief review of important points about home care. Separate the individual who is sick from other people and animals in the home. They should stay in a room by themselves and use a separate bathroom if available. A bedroom or room with a door is best. Use the guidelines of the state or local health department for when it's okay to stop home isolation, as these guidelines are subject to change. It's important to clean surfaces that you touch a lot, such as tables, doorknobs, light switches, countertops, handles, desks, phones, keyboards, toilets, and faucets. So pay attention to those um you know, things that people touch multiple times, like the handles, the desk, the computers, the phones, toilets, faucets, anything that could be shared, this is very important. The same thing in public. If you use a public bathroom and there is a doorknob, you have to assume this doorknob could be infected. Um, so, so you have to assume this is infected. Um, the same thing with, with faucets or tables and, uh, you know, keyboard. Clean all of these surfaces that are touched often every day using household cleaning sprays or wipes. If using a household bleach solution, dilute the bleach using the instructions on the bottle. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for application and proper ventilation. If please, if you're going to use a bleach like that, don't leave it uh, outside. There are 100% increase of toxicity or uh, intoxication with bleach. Kids are drinking this inadvertently, like that. and that's very, very dangerous, much more dangerous than the COVID-19. If you're going to use bleach like this, take it, put it in somewhere where kids cannot get uh, access to it. Very, very important. Please do not uh, leave it like he did possible, place a trash can with a trash bag in the room of the person who is sick with COVID-19. Use gloves when removing garbage bags and handling the trash. Wash your hands with soap and warm water for at least 20 seconds afterwards. For laundry, Wear gloves, again, washing your hands as soon as you remove the gloves. Do not shake out dirty laundry before washing. You can use a trash bag to line the laundry bins or clean and disinfect after use. Use the hottest water setting and ensure all items are completely dry. We understand not every home will have disposable gloves or medical masks. The priority is to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. If available, you can use disposable gloves. Remember to always wash your hands after taking off gloves. If you'll be in close quarters with someone who is sick and you do not have a mask available, 
You can use a homemade mask, such as a bandana or scarf, completely covering the nose and mouth. When preparing food, consider things like dishes, utensils, and napkins as something that could also spread infection. If possible, use paper plates, plastic forks and spoons that can be thrown away after use. If paper plates are not available, transfer used dishes straight to a sink filled with warm, soapy water to be washed. Then, if available, place for sanitizing in a dishwasher. Grocery, medication, and prepared food delivery are options in many communities. You could also ask a neighbor or family member for a pickup and drop off. When placing orders, simply request items are left at an easily accessible place, such as your front porch, to minimize contact with others. When you bring food into your house, immediately throw away the bag or other packaging materials. Disinfect the surfaces that the food came into contact with and clean your hands before eating or serving food. Seek medical attention immediately if you or your loved one have any of the following warning signs, including trouble breathing, chest pain or pressure, new confusion like answering questions wrong or difficulty waking up, bluish lips or face. This list doesn't include all of the symptoms. If you so those symptoms they're describing are the symptoms of worsening if somebody has the COVID-19, not, not the initial symptoms. You or your loved one is having other concerning symptoms, please consult your medical provider right away. Or if felt to be an emergency, call 911. Thank you and take care. The universe. So now, um, talk a little bit about the food. Um, so the FDA said that there is no report of. Uh, you know, that people get infected from food packaging um, or food itself. But again, you know, that's what I understand why people are worried about it. But that's not the main way we, you get infection. If you go to the supermarket and you get infected, it's probably from the supermarket being close to people, not necessarily from the food. But um, FDA does not recommend that you do disinfect fresh produce. So, for example, you know, apples and oranges. Uh, if there is something you can peel, do that. Uh, wash with water only. Even soap, you cannot remove the soap from the fruits. And I'm not sure if it's in safe. Definitely don't put any other material on fresh produce. If, any, if stuff that will be cooked, don't worry about it because it get, it, it's going to be uh, disinfected by cooking. If uh, other things that would be fresh for salad and stuff, just wash it with, with uh, water and rub it if there is any, uh, rub it with your hands or so. Wash your hands and you can eat it safely. So just to talk a little bit about what kills the virus. Um, so soap and water kills the virus, as we talked about. Heat above 70 degrees for 50 minutes. Some report only five minutes is enough. So clearly cooking anything that would basically disinfect it. Hand sanitizer if there's 60% alcohol also kill the virus. Uh, Bleach-based uh, product, but make sure do not touch your hands because it's irritated to the hand. It can cause problems. The wipes, that non-bleach uh, wipes also, um, it will kill the virus as well. Uh, but don't put it on food, please. Vinegar, freezing, if you put something in the freezer, lemon juice, uh, do not uh, work, or at least has not been studied but there is evidence it doesn't work on COVID-19. If you are worried about a certain product, EBA, which is like Environmental Protection Agency, they have a full list of approved product that you can uh, basically use uh, for COVID-19. It's a very long list, I didn't include it here, but if you're interested, you can just put in Google EBA list for COVID-19 products and you will have the full products if you're interested. So we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the myths, basically, khurafat, yani, myths. So the first myth, coronavirus will disappear when temperature increases or in summer. There is no evidence this will happen, uh, even though the flu is slowing down, but each virus is different. 
and um, this virus may be different. We may continue to see infection. Uh, there is some evidence that uh, you know sun sun and, t and higher temperature will decrease the transmission, but it, until now it does not stop it. Actually, in in uh, in December there are cases in the southern area, southern uh, hemisphere, when they were summer, basically, and they have cases as well. So uh, that's a myth. Gargling with salt and water is beneficial. There is no benefit to prevent uh, COVID-19. If somebody has a common cold or sore throat, they will feel better if they gargle with salt and water because it decreases the swelling, but not because they cured the virus or the infection. Um, so that's not gonna prevent it. Uh, rinsing nose with saline is beneficial to avoid dryness. That's not true. There's no evidence actually dryness affect uh, the transmission. Um, take home food is not safe. Like if you drive through home and stuff, you can, you can do that. Just do the uh, precaution that we said about removing the packaging and, and just be careful. But uh, the food itself does not transmit the disease. If you leave stuff in the garage for days, that will disinfect them. First, it may not be safe to do that, especially in summer. Uh, you can get other food poisoning. But in the other, there is no evidence this will happen, even though the virus could actually die after days. But it depends on the conditions and humidity. There's a lot of factors here. So I would not advise you do that necessarily. Uh, the coronavirus can enter through skin or, in t or you know, by eating food. That's not true. Either we talked about it. Young people will not get sick. That's not true. So young people can get sick. There is actually 20% of the hospitalization in uh, New York, uh, less than 40 year old. Uh, they don't have the same amount of uh, death rate, but still they can get sick. You should disinfect fresh produce. The answer is no, you shouldn't um, use water for now. Um, otherwise it may not actually be safe to eat. Vitamins help strengthen the immune system. That's not true. There's no evidence. Vitamins does anything for the immune system. Um, there's some exception, but I wouldn't mention it now. So there's a lot of question I got about enhancing the immune system. I just want to be clear here. There is nothing in medicine called enhancing the immune system for a reason, because there is not, you cannot measure the immune system in an objective way. So that's why if there is a something called enhancing the immune system, you cannot test it. So this is not scientific, but again, I'm going to mention though, there are certain things, if you do it, the infection rate of something like common cold decreases, there's no guarantee that would work with the COVID-19 since it's more lethal and more contagious. But I will mention it because people are interested in it. So, so this is complicated matter, as I mentioned. Uh, it's very hard to demonstrate in, in highly scientific material that this is will be possible to demonstrate that um that this would be possible uh, to, uh, to enhance the immune system so but what can you do this is taken from harvard public school a very prestigious medical school so healthy balanced diet healthy and balanced diet is important people who have lost a bunch of weight that could be at risk the people who have malnutrition like poor nutrition they could be at risk Good night sleep is very important. If actually there are some studies showed if you if you sleep less than seven or six hours, you could have higher risk of influenza or common cold. Nothing in COVID nineteen. Obviously, this is very new. Uh, healthy weight is important. People who are overweight or underweight, severely underweight, as a risk. Uh, no smoking. Obviously, smoking is does actually impair the immune system and cause more infection, especially the respiratory viruses like COVID-19. High content of fruit and vegetables is beneficial. Uh, but again, this is a general rules. Uh, minimize stress, easier said than done, obviously. The, what about other things like garlic and elderberry and oyster? There is a lot of food that has been described in small studies that maybe they will decrease the common cold symptoms. The, none of those has been studied in COVID-19, which is a totally different uh, disease. And there is no magic pill if that's what you're looking for, unfortunately. Just a healthy lifestyle, healthy weight, no smoking. Um, that would be the way, uh, good night's sleep. Maybe that's the way to, um, to actually protect yourself. And it's not guaranteed with such a disease, with highly contagiousness. 
Now we'll talk just the last couple of slides on Ramadan. What about Ramadan? There is a rumor out there that fasting could actually put you at risk for COVID-19. That's first, that's not true. There's no evidence of it. And nowadays, and actually intermittent fasting, intermittent va fasting, which is what the meaning of intermittent fasting, that not eating anything for 12 hours, sometimes they go longer, or at least eight to 12 hours has been proven to be healthy, decrease the inflammation, and actually improve um, you know, the health of the human being. And it's become actually fashionable. You will sing in the future, you see a lot of people who's the celebrities and stuff will be uh, doing this, intermittent fasting. So actually fasting, if it could be more healthier than none. However, um, there is no evidence or logic behind that fasting increase the corona risk. Sick and elderly people are excused from fasting. It's important not to fast if somebody's really uh, very old and has multiple comorbidities. You have to ask for fatwa if you want. Uh, somebody like on insulin, for example, is very hard to fast. Uh, so there are certain people who should not fast 100%. And doctors can tell you that's very easy. We can tell people who have kidney disease, severe kidney disease, they're on dialysis and stuff. Those are, you know, cannot fast probably. It will be risky. Uh, sick people should break their fast, no question, especially if they have moderate symptoms. If you suspect you have COVID-19, uh, break your fast if you have moderate symptoms. You start coughing, you have a fever, I would advise you to break your fast and actually make sure you maintain a good hydration at that time. And you make it up, inshallah, when you get healthy again. So very, very important. Absolutely no feast or gathering of, in Ramadan of multiple families. Please, please do, do that. People in other states, alhamdulillah, in, in Missouri and Kansas, in our area only, you know, the leaders of this community, the leaders of the, the state uh, has um, actually uh, closed the schools early. They put the shutdown early. And alhamdulillah, we don't have a lot of cases. If you see the condition in Michigan, it's horrible. One of my friends, uh, who's a physician, he got it from the hospital. He went home. He didn't know he got it. And he had two people, they, they came to, bl to play bing bong. Both got it just from playing with him in two hours. And they're basically, uh, so this is not no joke. Uh, people can get it very easily, alhamdulillah, all recovered. Nobody like lost their life or anything or need hospitalization. But it's scary. And, and actually his kids got it, his, his wife got it as well. Very contagious, especially before you know the symptoms. So multiple families together is a bad idea, even for prayer. Uh, or for obviously uh, food, very bad idea. And if one of them have the disease, there's a good chance everybody can get it at the end of that. Uh, of that. So I will stop here and um, I'm open for questions. Uh, sister, if you can please uh, unmute people. I apologize, I took much more time than I anticipated. <laughs> Thank you very much for the useful talk. It was very, really important. And we have uh, to know a lot of small things we usually think it's wrong or it's correct. So if anybody has any question, please uh, write it in the chat down. Or if anyone would like to talk, please uh, raise your hand. Raise your hand, you can see it in uh, three dots where it's small. You can click it on it and you will see uh, a tab called uh, raise your hands so if I unmute everybody I'm afraid that a lot of people will talk together and this will make a little bit mess uh, there's a question from Lucky if you can look at it please uh, Dr. Taha Inshallah I'll just look at the chat just a second so some, uh, some imam the, the question some imam suggesting not to sleep too much, not to eat too much. I think that's because of the holy month. Uh, I think not to sleep too much. That's a bad idea. Uh, what I mean, sleep is good for health. If you, if somebody sleep like maybe like more than twelve hours, <laughs> I guess that's may not be. Uh, but there is no he health consequences of sleeping too much. Um, but sleep is part of health. Uh, I know in Ramadan it's hard. You wake up for suhoor. But try to uh, make it up by sleeping afterwards. Sleep, you can sleep uh, you know, at noon 
uh, not eating too much exactly. I mean, that's very important, but I'm not necessarily because you're going to get infected if you eat too much, but just a healthy, um, people should lose weight. If you are fasting such a long hours and you do not lose weight, there's something you're doing wrong, honestly. If you're overweight, if you're normal weight, you can maintain your weight, that would be great. So the next question, uh, since this is a virus, can it mutate? Uh, yeah, of course it can, but uh, doesn't happen uh, right away. That means if it mutates, it can be uh, better for us because it can, most of the mutation, actually, they're not survi surviving mutation, means that they cannot be more contagious. So um, don't worry about the mutation. We got the worst version, unfortunately, already. Um, but there is something I want to warn people. If this virus is slowed down because of summer, because people are more out and less indoor, um, it can come back in winter, unfortunately, unless we have vaccination or we have a treatment that's effective. Or people, like 50% of people got it, then maybe it wouldn't come back. But if uh, there is still a good chance it can come back next year, unfortunately. Um, so... The other question is, uh, what's meant by multiple families for iftar? Oh, I meant anybody who doesn't live in the same house. If you invite your neighbors um, do, who do not live with you at home, that's not a good idea. Um, because your neighbor could be exposed to the virus. Now you get it. And you could be personally exposed to the virus. So you want to be generous to them and invite them. Then you give them the COVID-19. You know, and then they will you know, they will be in trouble and you'll be in trouble. And, and by the way, it's requirement to tell people, like if you got it, they, uh, so if you got test positive, you have to go to everybody who will be in close contact. And can you imagine going to somebody who just invited you or you invited them and tell them that I was tested positive, see what, what kind of reaction you're gonna get from them. So I don't advise friends to, actually uh, meet indoor, um, even outdoor. I mean, you can, if you can maintain six feet distance, that's, that's okay. Like if you wanna walk in the neighborhood, but just maintain the distance. You can do that with your wife. Anybody who lives in the same household, your kids, that's okay because you're already exposed to each other. But that, that's what the CDC recommends, it's not myself. So a uh, great question about when do you think we can go back to normal? That's a very, very important question. People, this is like a million dollar question. If we know the answer to that, we'll be rich. But I, I will tell you what we need, basically, to get back to normal. We need the testing that would be available to everybody. Because if somebody has symptoms, have to be tested, you have to trace the contacts and make sure all isolated. So for example, uh, the state has to hire hundreds of people to trace the positive contact. Like let's say somebody, me or you got positive, they have to sit in, at home for 14 days. Everybody who got a close contact with that per person has to be contacted and sit at home for 14 days. Otherwise, you cannot open uh, everything. And it, this has to be gradual as well. You cannot do it right away. Um, let me see. I mean, I know some people think there's a lot of exaggerations of um, the worries about this, but it's deadly virus. I mean, if if I'm telling you 5% chance you can die, if you're older, like you invite somebody who has an older, 20% chance of 70 year old or 80 year old and above to die. I mean, this is, you don't take that chances to be honest with you. The problem also, even if you're young, you're healthy, you could actually uh, hurt somebody else. And that's the other thing that we have to be careful. Alhamdulillah, I will tell you some, because of the measures we took, we are very successful so far in bending the curve. What mean? We don't have as many cases. If we, if we have as many cases as New York or uh, Michigan or Italy, the ICUs will be full. The, you can go to the hospital. There's no place to take you in the hospital. They discharge people earlier. They have to ration the ventilators, see who's going to get ventilators. Uh, older people, they say, like, if they're really sick, so like, we have to put it for somebody younger. Don't uh, force people to make those decisions. I know one person uh, cannot make the full, um, you know, it's not about one person, it's about community. So if, if everybody does his part, Alhamdulillah will pass and we will uh, be safe uh, together. 
So another question, how about kids uh, and grandkids from another home uh, when family uh, still think they're one family? I mean, that's up to you, honestly. There are certain families who, as if they live together. I mean, I would advise, I'm telling you, if you have elderly at home, and letting your grandkids come to you, there is that risk. I know there, uh, one of my colleagues, she has a grandparents who, like, they see them from, like, long distance and they, say, they wave and go and they call on the phone they just try they're scared not to hurt them so i mean it's up to you i told you that there are risks there is no question about it i mean you it's up to you what you want to do um you know grandkids can actually infect their grandparents and Allah, if he has to go to the hospital and be very sick or be in, in, intubated they're not going to feel well not gonna feel better about it just by joining iftar if you get it once can you get it again i mean that's a great question uh the short answer probably not there are certain report the people tested positive after they got cured but again the test does not mean you got it necessarily because basically it detects part of the virus but this part may not be causing symptoms so long as short answer probably not <laughs> But again, that's one of the things could change in the future because they're doing a lot of studies to find the answer of that question. So how, um, how can we uh, guarantee not to get it from others, others who may uh, be one of our home household and he may go out to work or shopping? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. There is no way. If you're in the same household is, and somebody get infected, unfortunately, it's hard not to get it. Uh, because we're not, we don't, we're not recommending to isolate within that same family. But honestly, if everybody's careful, they wear the masks when they get out uh, and they wash their hands, do these measures, um, inshallah, they will be safe. But the risk is much less if we don't intermingle with multiple families. So one family risk is much less. Um, but everybody has to take it seriously within the household. Um, I go to, uh, you know, my, in my own family, I go to work. I have to. And I come back, um, you know, first, I've, I'm very careful at work. And second, I, I try to stay away from, you know, people there. I try to wear the mask and take all the measures because I'm worried about my family as well. But the, ask, the question here, we shouldn't be uh, overwhelmed with this information. This is to help us, not to um, add the stress that we have. Uh, do your part. And at that time, tawakkal on Allah. Just rely on Allah Azza wa Jal for protection but after you do your part and and follow the advice of the doctors and the cdc and the fda uh, and what's the worst case scenario that was it you worried about this was exaggerated and we didn't get it alhamdulillah what happened we missed certain i know that there are um, some economical issues but believe me uh, people wanted to open this as soon as possible for a lot of reasons and if, the, if it's possible they would have done it especially with the current president so why the sick uh, person have risk to die? Great question. So why people die from it? So this virus actually can cause pneumonia and it can break down the membranes of the lungs. So you can think about it if you, somebody got drawn. There's a lot of fluids in their lungs. You cannot actually breathe. And something similar could happen. So you basically, um, you have a lot of secretions inside and damage to the lung. And then you cannot breathe. And you put them in a ventilator, you put 100% oxygen, you still can't breathe. Uh, that's how people die from it. So it does have uh, affinity. They like the lungs, this virus, unfortunately. And it's, they like the, to cause that complication. Not everybody, just some people. Uh, what about causing uh, people not to take ibuprofen? So far, not true. So take ibuprofen if you have to. But hopefully you don't have a fever. Um, don't, this is not true, it's not proven that you should avoid ibuprofen. Um, advice for those who have uh, lack of Iman, lack of Iman to quarantine, lack of, um, I don't know if, if the meaning they don't understand, they don't have the belief they, of the quarantine. Um, if, that's, if I understood this question uh, correctly, so if people do not believe that the virus is dangerous and what do we do? 
I mean, clearly that's not, nothing will help. <laughs> Maybe there are people around them to share, like their wives uh, should, should be on top of it and just make sure they follow the advice because they will hurt everybody. Um, but if somebody has lack of Iman, if this is about the faith, I, I don't know if the lack of Iman will cause you not to quarantine. I mean, people uh, quarantine even if there is disbeliever. Um, and sorry, cautioning. Uh, I don't think, uh, Sister Lucky, can you repeat your question? Um, so relatives getting upset if we do not gather in Ramadan. Uh, yeah, I mean, being upset better than kill them. I don't know. Um, so you make it up for them in the future. Um, you can tell them it's on me. And uh, if they don't like it, then I don't know what to do. I mean, this is... Tell them the doctor said don't do that. And honestly, look, I look at it from halal and haram as well. Here. Anything that's harmful is haram. And this is potentially harmful. And if this is harmful, then it should not be allowed, even from a faith. And I'm not making fatwa. You have the imam who can make you fatwa. I just kind of tell you that this is potentially harmful. And the imam can tell you it's haram or not. <laughs> to together. Uh, so... I mean, people accuse you to have no Iman if you, okay. So a great question. So sometimes people, I will tell you a story of Amr ibn al-As, um, Amr ibn al-As, sorry, the, Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar ibn al-Khattab, uh, one time he was uh, traveling to Asham and he was heard there is the ta'un, plague, contagious disease. And actually Umar ibn al-Khattab uh, asked the Sahaba, should I go forward or come back to the Medina? Some of them said, go forward, you know, take, this is Qadr. Some of them told you to actually uh, go back to the Medina. We don't want to lose you. You're the Khalifa. And uh, Abu, then at the end of the day, he heard the hadith, the Prophet Asasam, that do not enter the, uh, the Ta'un. Before he heard the hadith, uh, one of the great Sahaba, who's Abu Ubaidah Amr ibn Jarrah, he told him, Qadr Allah, are you, are you uh, trying to uh, escape the qadr of Allah and Umar, told, Umar actually was so angry with him and said لو غيرك قالها يا أبو عبيدة. if somebody else has told me that Abu Ubaidah I'm escaping from qadr Allah ila qadr Allah so any decision we make about safety this is the qadr of Allah you're not you have believed in qadr of course and part of the qadr is you take those measures bar, this is part of the qadr that you take those measures. Part of the Qadr, we do not smoke. Part of the Qadr, we do not take poison. Part of the Qadr, but you can, if you want to let it go and say like, I'm not going to get in, uh, dead if I eat that poison or that rotten food or something like that, you're stupid. That's not what Qadr Allah means. Qadr Allah means you take the asbab, you take, um, you, you, you make your decision based on the safety that with the information that you have, then you rely on Allah Azza wa after that not to get it because you, you may get it even if you follow all these recommendations. You can still get it. If Allah wants that, it will happen. Nothing will prevent it, but it's still up on you to take those uh, opportunities. And Umar al-Khattab, he actually uh, went back. So he did the quarantine, basically. Um, please. Um, Brother Fadi wants to ask a question, please, if you don't okay. mind. Uh, Anybody in Arabic no, no. I will explain it as well. Uh, Doctor, I asked my question uh, on, in chat and you answered. Okay. You can allow people to speak if you want to. I, I, have, I, have, okay, I have another question actually, really quick. Okay, since sure. okay so we already at the masjid, we cancelled, of course, the ultra week and, and uh, Eid al Fatr. Do you think by Eid al Adha we, would, we, should, uh, we will have uh, that restriction? On the number as well? Uh, yeah, inshallah. I mean, maybe even earlier. I mean, do not worry about what happened several months from now. Just worry about the next yeah, couple yeah. of weeks. Who knows sure. what happened? But I don't think the Salat al-Eid is possible, clearly. Based on, yeah. it's not going to go away. Uh, large gathering cannot happen right away. So things that, for Salat al-Eid, clearly you cannot plan on it. But after that, Allahu Alam. Okay, Zakhla. So, um, if somebody wants, I think... Uh, Sister Abdul Karim wants to, Abdul Halim wants to talk if you can unmute her. What Sorry. treatment? Uh, what? Just a second. What treatment so far have been shown to be effective 
uh, none, unfortunately. So like what I mean effective, like 100% with certainty, we don't have uh, a treatment with 100% certainty, unfortunately, uh, or even like 95% certainty. We have re report re uh, remdesivir, this is very encouraging data. So inshallah, there will be treatment. Don't worry about it, but none. So if you hear the hydroxychloroquine in a few weeks, it wasn't effective, uh, then, you know, do not, do not be surprised, basically, because the data that was initially, when we start to prescribe it, was not very strong. But hopefully it will be effective, but we have to test it. The research has not been done, the good research. There are some reports of effic efficacy, especially with remdesivir. Oh, sister is going to talk because I don't see any hand uh, is raising. Uh, she wants you to open her mic. Uh, yeah, uh, what's her name? Because I don't Dalia know. Abdul she da Dalia she Abdul. Dalia. A Dalia. Dalia Abdul. Dalia. Yes, okay. Sorry. Assalamu alaikum. Tadari Dalia. Um, Dr. I was going to ask if there was anyone who had any symptoms like a headache or a headache or something. أنا سمعت إنه بعد أربع أيام مثلاً ممكن تظهر أعراض لا سمح الله الكورونا فخلال الأربع أيام دول إيه التطورات هل الأعراض دي بتخف تماماً وبتظهر أعراض جديدة ولا ولا بتتطور ولا يعني ولا هو مش مش كورونا يعني زي نعرف مثلاً هي حساسية موسمية وإيه الفرق بينها وبين الكورونا ده أول سؤال السؤال الثاني إذا كان بيتقال إنه أخذ فيتامين دي وزنك وفيتامين سي فده هل الجرعة دي مش كتير في اليوم يعني إزاي نأخذ الفيتامين دي كلها ولا نستعيد بها عن المالتي في بالمالتي فيتامين وخلاص كمان ثالث سؤال عفوا دكتور إذا إذا في حد جديد هنا في كانساس وما عندوش طبيب يعني يرجع له لو حصل أي حاجة يعني يتوجه لمين إذا ما فيش برايمري دكتور مثلاً فنروح لمين؟ طيب. بس المهم طيب أنا I will answer in Arabic then I will translate it أختي في ال في قضية ال أنا حكيت في المحاضرة كمان إنه اللي عنده أعراض مثل سيلان في الأنف هي عادة مش كورونا ونادر ما يكون كورونا يعملها كورونا بدون حرارة بدون سعال جاف عادة ما نو كورونا شلون يعني ما أنا مية في المية بس يعني حب يعني عادة ممكن يطمن الواحد شوي وما يخاف كثير بس يعني مو غلط يعمل نفس الإجراءات مو ضروري العزل التام بس يبعد عن النا يعني اللي حواليه ما يعبيهم عرفت شلون إن كيس احتمال يعني الكورونا يكون أقل من خمسة يعني هاي السؤال الأول فعادة مو كورونا بالنسبة للفيتامينات ما في أي دليل إنه الفيتامينات ممكن توقي من هذا الشيء حكينا بالموضوع إذا حبيت تأخذيهن عادة ما في ضرر إذا الجرعات معقولة فيك تاخذي يعني فيتامينات لو حبيتي بس ما بالنسبه للمناعه ما في دليل انه بتقوي المناعه عرفتي يعني فعراحتك يعني بس ما في دليل يعني مو بس ما في دليل في دليل انه ما بتفيد يعني في في فرق يعني بس على كل في ناس بياخذون الفيتامينات بتفيد الاشخاص اللي عندهم نقص تغذيه اللي عندهم ما بيقدروا ياكلوا منيح لاسباب كثيره الاشخاص اللي نباتيين في اشياء في ناس معينين ممكن تفيدهم فيتامينات اللي عنده نقص وزن امراض اسهال مزمن اللي عامل يعني عمليه سمنه هذول الناس ممكن يستفيدوا في الفيتامينات بشكل عام ما بيفيدوا لا الفيتامين د الفيتامين د ممكن يفيد بس مو بالمناعه على كل يعني هذول بده طبيب ممكن مش كانوا بس بدك تاخذيهم عاده ما في ضرر يعني هي اهم شيء انه ما بده بالنسبه للطبيب اللي ما عنده طبيب حطينا انه في يتصل في ترومان انت ساكنه في جونسون كان ولا وين ساكنه؟ آه. كانسا آه. سيتي اوفر بزوري بزوري اوفر لامبارد يعني في جونسون كاونتي عندهم هو الكاونتي اللي عايشين فيه نحن عندهم رقم فيك تتصلي فيه اذا عندك الاعراض بس بده يكون بيقولوا لك انه تيجي تعملي تيست ولا لا وين تروح بس يعني اذا الاعراض خفيفه ما حيعملوا لك تيست عرفت شلون؟ يعني بس مش ما وكتبته انا في المحاضره واذا بترجع للريكوردينج للتسجيل ممكن تلاقي الارقام او تدوري عليهم في الجوجل شكرا دكتور شكرا الاس ذا كويشنز شي اسك اي ويل انسر فيري كويشن بيكوز ذي وير انكلودد شي واز اسكين اباوت ذا ديفرنس ان سيمبتومز بيتوين يو نو كومن كولد اند كورونا اند وي انسر ذا ان ذا يو نو انسر ذا ان ذا ليكتشر بت اي جست اكسبلين ان عربيك اند اولسو شي اسك اباوت ذا فيتامينز اند اي تولد هير اي دونت ثينك ذير از بينيفيت نيسيرلي تو تيكن فيتامينز بت اتس بروبلي نوت هارمفول ايذر 
Um, and the last question, if you don't have insurance, what to do? If you suspect you have corona, and I mentioned you have to call you know, your local health department and they will tell you what to do. If you have a primary care, obviously call your primary care. If you don't, uh, you call the uh, county health department and they will guide you what to do. Uh, those are the questions. Any other question? Uh, I think there's one more. Uh, New York and New Jersey, so many doctors are dying, although uh, they are very cautious. Is there any explanation just taking care of COVID patients? Um, since they're lucky, I think the issue is not because they're cautious. There is also, what I, in the old hospitals now, we don't have enough masks. We don't have enough. They're not very careful because they didn't have enough equipment to be careful. So they actually had to take care of patients in suboptimal conditions. And that's why they got infected, unfortunately. And also, when you see uh, patients who do not have symptoms, they can infect the doctors as well in the hospital. So there's a lot of reason why this happened. If they have enough equipment, they should not get infected. Like in China, the risk of infection healthcare worker were not high because they had enough in, uh, equipment, uh, masks and uh, appropriate uh, clothing and gloves and stuff like that. Chat. Oh. So from the chat, um, we we mentioned. Uh, I know people want to uh, pray, so at some point we have to stop, inshallah. But what time is it now? Um, Eight eighteen. So I will stop in maybe five minutes. Uh, Please can you end the slideshow? Uh, yeah, if you tell me which uh, one. Actually, no, I can no, send no, it to you. It. Do you want me no. to send it to you? We can send, uh, is there a way we can send it? Um, Maybe uh, this uh, session is going to be recorded so everyone can, would like can to see, see it. it. And later we can uh, uh, see a way how can we save it and distribute it between other brothers and sisters. But if you now you can uh, stop sharing, it will be good. Oh, I see what you're saying, okay. I'm yeah, sorry. this is the thing. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, that's true. So, um, let me answer a couple of questions. Um, does drinking water and getting sunlight help? Drinking water, probably not. Um, I mean, there is no evidence drinking water will do anything uh, to prevent COVID-19. Um, getting sunlight, drinking more water. I mean, if you're thirsty, you can drink, but I don't think that will prevent the COVID-19. Getting sunlight, um, obviously with sunlight you don't want to get burned with sunlight so I don't know if you may you mentioned like you go in the sunlight for briefly um, I don't think there's evidence that would help so virus does not last very long in the hot summer or hot uh, sun but again if you got it the virus is protected you are the one who's gonna burn yourself um, and what else um, what do you recommend uh, to disinfect the groceries packaging. Um, the non-bleach wipes the best. You know, non-bleach wipes because uh, bleach wipes can actually cause a lot of problems in your hands. And, and if you wear gloves, will be better. Uh, just because you don't want to irritate your hands. But uh, just for the packages, um, something like the Clorox wipes is appropriate. It will clean it well. Um, and they also, because there is a shortage of the Clorox wipes, uh, the FDA approved other type of wipes. You can go to the EPA list of um, disinfectant and you find other products uh, that would be appropriate as well. And you find it in the, also on the shelves and regular supermarkets. Um, so those wipes, all regular disinfected, infecting agents all works for that virus. It's not very resistant to disinfecting agents. It's resistant if you stay on the so, for example, if you know, on plastic, it can stay up to seven days, the virus. So, if, and um, I think this is the last question. Is there any, but any other questions? Inshallah, we'll conclude sh uh, soon, inshallah. It's 8.20. Uh, my end, my last uh, question was, uh, do we consider the people are dying, are shaheed? And, or this is, obviously that's the Imam answer. My understanding, uh, anybody who die with not natural causes could be considered Shaheed, but Imam can answer it better uh, with more knowledge. You can, uh, the other issue is, unless he inflicted himself, like he was careless. 
I'll tell you one story for people who are, uh, I, I probably should uh, tell you, people who actually disregard this information. Remember the basketball player who was laughing about the corona uh, in the NBA? He was a member of uh, Utah Jazz. So basically, the guy's very healthy. He, um, at the end of the conference, he touched all the microphones because he was uh, basically making a joke about the corona. That was in March before the NBA stopped. And he got the, he got the coronavirus. Uh, that will tell you if you disregard those measures or if you take it as a joke, you can get it. The same thing with Johnson, the prime minister of UK. Uh, he, he was not taking it seriously and he got it. So, um, yeah, people who do not take it seriously, they can easily get it. Any other questions? And Some, one question, please. Uh, they ask about, uh, again, food. If the food contaminated or had the virus, like an apple or something, or somebody touched them and eat, uh, eat them, eat the food. Eat Is the food it, does not, if you eat food that- Even it has uh, contaminated- it's Yeah, because uh, think about it. This is a respiratory virus. It's like getting, you cannot get the flu for example, from eating contaminated food. Um, so, but if you touch any surface that contaminated and touch your nose or eyes, you can get it. Because this virus has to go through those entry points. It cannot go through the skin. It cannot go through the intestine or the stomach. Um, at least there is no reports of anybody who got it this way. And that's what the FDA has said, it's not my opinion. I will open the microphone if somebody cannot uh, raise his hand to someone who would like to talk, maybe two, three, four minutes. So I will unmute everyone. Um, oh my God. It doesn't work, huh? No, yeah. no, no, it was not. <laughs> okay, I think somebody has any question, maybe later he can send it uh, for you and or send it to me and I proceed it for you. Uh, yeah, I'm but, happy to send the answer in writing or uh, somebody has just a question, inshallah, I can answer it. Jazakumullah khair for, for this uh, opportunity. Really, it was a useful talk. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Taha, for taking your time out of your busy schedule to answer the questions we have and uh, give some advice and share your insights on some issues we are facing today. Uh, we ask Allah to add it uh, to your good deeds. We uh, also thank you all for your being with us today. We hope you have gotten all the information you want to know about the coronavirus and all the precautions and advice about it. May Allah keep it away from us and cure every sick person from it and any other sickness. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-junoon wal-jizami wa min sayyi al-aqsam. الأسقام كل عام أنتم بخير ورمضان كريم وإن شاء الله نلقاكم في لقاءات أفضل من هيك بإذن الله وأنتم الجميع بصحة وعافية السلام عليكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله